I'd like to introduce you to Zara Gomez, who has done a very thoughtful process of re-examining the way we are designing and building transit-oriented development sites. Zara? Hi, everybody. My name is Zara Gomez. I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. When I recall on memories and thoughts of what inspired me to be a landscape architect, I immediately think of the Philippines. I was born and raised in the Philippines in the city of Manila. My first influence of the landscape is from an urban context. When I was younger, I remember playing across the street in the park, playing all day till nightfall. I remember seeing my dad socializing with family and friends across the street in the park as they come home from work. I remember walking to the market with my grandma, and um, I remember skating, my, skating around town to go to the cultural center with my uncle. Well, at eight years old, I moved here in the U.S., and I actually lived in Panama City for 10 years, and the experience was quite the opposite. I stayed inside most of the day in an apartment, and pretty much there's no other options. Just inside. Home for me is being outside, being active, and knowing your neighbors. This childhood memories helped inspire my thesis project. Pattern City TLB, the heart of San Fernando Valley. The reason for doing this project is to create a transit-oriented development that transforms the built environment into a model for urban space, healthy activities, a sustainable community that promotes positive impacts on the quality of life. The trouble is that in the last half centuries, we have designed physical activity out of our daily routine and by being more auto-dependent. And now modern America is facing many problems such as obesity, inactivity, depression, and loss of community. My goal for this project is to integrate physical activity back into daily routines and also to create an appealing and comfortable street environments, open spaces, and parks to increase social connections and our sense of community. And to accomplish these goals, I've narrowed down to four design concepts, health, outdoors, mobility, and experience. In short, oh, a multi-generational healthy community design concept. After looking at many TODs, I have actually have chosen Panama City. Um, it's located <coughs> in the central portion of San Fernando Valley. It can be re-established re as a major regional commercial port. And it just so happened that it's the new site for the East San Fernando Valley Transit Corridor. Um, as you can see, it's characterized by industrial areas, empty lots, vacant buildings, and um, as my daughter would say, ugly. <laughs> um, um, uh, three different transit will pass through San um, Panama City, and as my study area, I have chosen the Central Station, which is um, adjacent near the Panama Mall. In this master plan, there are four distinctive elements that I have designed on the regional level. And let me just say, there are originally existing 40 acres of parking lots, and within a half mile radius, and with a population of 10,700 in that half mile radius, I've converted the parking lot into open spaces and that would get me 3.7 um, acres of open space per thousand people. And so my main element is the Great Park, which is centralized to the neighborhood. And the other three elements supports the Great Park. One is the light rail system, which I have designed since it's not created yet, which runs along the <coughs> along Van Nuys Boulevard, and as you can see in this diagram is the red line, and I've also designed it so that it, in this area, as you can see on this section, it is elevated, and I've designed a transit plaza that, um, on top of the mall, and I've actually redesigned the mall, created the transit rooftop plaza on top, and then my second, my third design element is the wellness loop, which is under my health concept to promote an active lifestyle. Um, it is a bike and pedestrian urban trail that runs three miles through the heart of the Panama City, as you can see here. 
So whether they're commuting, commuting, exercising, or running errands, you know, it's pretty much fun and safe for all ages. Uh, this three mile loop connects you to three different schools and it takes you to across the Great Park, south to Roscoe. Uh, we have a mission hospital. Um, takes you to the new Pacoima Creek Park that I've designed with uh, middle school and then going out to Pacoima Creek and then back to the Sepulveda Recreational Park. The fourth design element that I have designed is the building structures. Um, after attending multiple community meetings, the community members and the city officials have identified the need for uh, a college extension, which I have designed right now the location of a um, vacant Montgomery Ward. Um, I've designed a central library and also a community center, which I've designed in incorporating it into the open space of the Great Park. And I've also relocated two of the three existing grocery stores. One here, which is right now a swap meet, and I've actually moved the swap meet to the cultural center. Um, another grocery um, fresh food store is on the south of Roscoe, and the reason for that is to provide a more walking distance for the neighbors. And oh, the last third one is in this market district. And I've also, as we see in this diagram, I've divided the whole site uh, into different um, districts. We have the Civic Center, Educational Center, uh, the Great Park. Uh, Station Plaza. We have the cultural district. Oh, sorry, yeah, cultural district, our civic center, and the market district. <coughs> As for my experience concept, life at the park. On the every typical every day of the park, you know, kids can come and practice soccer. We have the um, central library, the community center for kids to come after school, which is greatly needed since they mostly just stay home. Um, we also have a skate park that's also um, provided. Uh, you can go jogging and strolling. I provided different types of tracks along the Great Park. So if you want a moderate stroll, you know, through the um, forest, more passive area on the northern part of the Great Park. Here I have a more, um, it's more easy, and this one is more a little more moderate level. And then we have the more advanced track that highlights the. Um, grand staircase so people can just go up and down the stairs and get their hands down. Um, so um, as here in this plan it is a, a big blow from the amphitheater in transit plaza which is located right here and it's a more detailed um, of the different elements that I have incorporated in my design. Here is the view of the amphitheater from the transit plaza. So I have this idea of you coming home, I mean, coming out of the transit on top of the mall. And it's kind of like the, the gateway to this destination. It's like, oh, wow, I'm home. You know? And it's kind of like a cleansing experience of your being one in nature. Here is a view of the grand staircase, you know, a view from the amphitheater, as you can see here. Um, on this section, you can see how I design um, how I've readjusted the uh, travel lanes along Van Nuys Boulevard to accommodate the bike lanes and also to make room for the um, elevated transit system that I have designed through the plaza and then through this great stand, grand staircase to the great park with the amphitheater. We have here a, a cafe, which also could be a, um, a stage for bigger events. And through the um, <coughs> Tobias Street, is right here, and to the, um, the new school. This is the Civic Center, and again, you know, we have some details here of what, of what I had designed in that center. And this rendering is Chase Street underpass. That's what I used to um, connect the northern part of the Great Park and the southern part, which is located right in this area. Uh, here uh, in this rendering, um, you can see the view and the experience that you know, people go through as you stroll along the northern part of the Great Park, which is that area, and on the overall, it's that area. So here on this board, we have you know, an idea of how the market district looks, and also I have different 
sections on how I um, readjusted the length of the width of the travel lanes to accommodate the, the longest loop, which is a two lane bike pedestrian lane, which you know creates more of a destination loop instead of just a regular bike lane. Um, and here you have a section of the the creek, the Pacoma Creek, with the um, park adjacent to it, and also with the um, wellness loop. So, in conclusion, Panama City um, is one of the most ethnically diverse and socially challenged neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Um, by promoting a centralized public space, um, it will give it the community a platform for the acts of everyday life. Um, creating a truly unique urban space, urban center for Panama City, it will give it a strong identity on the local and global scale while promoting a positive impact on the quality. Thank you, Seth, for having me. Questions, comments? Francisco. You did an awesome job. I, mean, I, can, I can tell you, I was like, the only notes I was taking was trying to encapsulate what you did in terms of effort and quality. And what I saw was, something that's really very competent, very creative, tells, gives me a lot of credibility in your ideas mm -hmm. as you describe them. They all sounded very plausible, uh, very thoughtful. <laughs> the other way of looking at your project, it's full of intelligence. It's really, uh, you're obviously very talented, you have a great skill in presenting, but you're also uh, a good thinker and you, you've managed to take a very complicated series of problems and, and programmatic ideas and functional constraints and what, and it looks very elegant and direct the way you've done it. So I think you did a great job. Um, I find it even hard to say that I could improve on anything. My only very minor comment that I would do is I'd like to get a spatial sense of that street, of Van Nuys Street, and I think that. I get a little bit of it there, mm -hmm. but it would be great to actually be at eye level to really begin to appreciate what you've done there, because I think your park design is very rich. It's got a lot of interesting ideas and level changes, and, and the form of it, how it relates to all the forms of the buildings, do a really great job. So that would, I would add to that. Some of it you could have captured on the section mm -hmm. by actually showing the background of the buildings in the background, because it looks such like a very sort of oversimplified condition, whereas. In reality, it's an incredibly rich condition of elements. You've got a little portion of a building there, but I know there's more buildings beyond. Mm -hmm. I really like the fact that you're using credible tenants, even, you know, you're actually showing a Walmart, and you're, you're actually, you're being very realistic about the potential tenants that are going to be there. So, I mean, overall, I'm really impressed. I think you, you've done what is truly a good or excellent uh, thesis project uh, that, you know, Demonstrates that you're very skilled and you have a great capacity to be a great landscape partner. Great, thanks. Yes. Well, Zara, since the last time I saw you, many, I think your illustrations are, have really enriched my belief that you know what you're doing. Until you did those, I really didn't have, you were not confident, I didn't, I didn't believe what you had designed. But you have shown me in your illustrations, which are really very painterly and very nice, that you, your thought pattern understands all of the elevation changes, all of the experiences you want to have. And your long section is, is very powerful through there to show how you really sensitively dealt with the street condition, with the light rail, and I would sink your amphitheater bit with you. That's my personal. I don't like places you go down into. I like to be raised up. And uh, but I I also think your loop is very elegant. And I actually worked on Pacoma Creek when I before I became the director here. And and I think that you're connecting the schools is very clearly shown. I think your your two terminal parks are very strong. The connections you have. You didn't mention the Chase Creek Bridge, but I think. You, you've really hit all of the issues that we talked about, and, and you've done a very nice job of it. Very nicely done. Yes. Um, I, 
I also think you did a great job. Um, a couple of things that I really noticed and that I appreciate is one that you had a that you thought about your presentation and you had notes. Um, it took time to do that, and it showed in your presentation. It was very clear and very well organized, and um, you you were by having notes you hit all the things that you wanted to hit, which made for a very clear oral presentation. Um, graphically, it's also a very clear presentation, and one of the things that I really appreciate is this very clear, big idea concept of home. And I also really appreciated the personal story that you shared with, that goes with that. That really makes the design much more rich. But what's great about that idea, and even, you know, it's a little, it's a little hokey, you know, but I think it's, it's very clear and it's great. You know, it, it adds a personal touch. And in your diagrams, um, what makes it, what captivates me about it is it's color coded. Um, it's very clear, and and I can look at the health, and I can see those areas that you've highlighted in orange, and I can look at your overall design and see where those are. So there's a very strong, direct, literal correlation between those diagrams and your whole design. Which it takes a lot of thought to do that, and it take you know it really shows the cohesion of all the different spaces and how they work together to to um, to satisfy your goal and to accomplish your goal. So I think I think you did a great a great job. I, I too appreciate the thoughtfulness on, on a number of different levels, sort of the overall um, comprehensiveness of what you what you've accomplished, and then the sort of thoughtfulness on individual spaces. And I'm just curious, wh what's your favorite place? I mean, where, where would you want to be? Um, everywhere. <laughs> 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 it actually depends on what, you know, what I, I'm going to do for that day. I actually, you know, created it so that it's great for, you know, everybody. So, I mean, with all the, you know, people day, weekend, or festival, and they're all, you know, different, like the you know, cultural district, you know, it's more of like a small, you know, right now it's more of like that village feel to it, and I just kind of extended it and put it on this great civic, you know, area. And so it depends, you know, if I want to go to market, I have this great space, you know, to go to the store and, and do my errands, and then, you know, be active in the morning and you know, go to park. So, I mean, I can go everywhere in one day. <laughs> Good answer. I just want to say it's kind of cool what it came to because I remember at first, like the first three few classes we were in class together, that um, it was more about we were talking about like if you're in New York and you take the subway and you get off in like Chinatown, or then you take it and you get off in like Little Italy, and you kind of like made those different districts all in one space. I mean, there's three. I think there's three TOD entrance yeah. and exits. But essentially, it's kind of like you brought all those different elements. Maybe that's like a little Manhattan you kind of made there, you know? <laughs> and you incorporated a lot of those elements into one space right. that's connected. So yeah, that's, that's what amazing. I thought was, was TOD, is the closest possible walking distance to everything. You know, that's what I thought. If you, you know, right now, we have transit and it's surrounded by parking spaces. So, I mean, you know, your experience and just coming home from work or going to work and just driving. No, I'm, I'm, I'm curious because because it is a transit oriented district. Mm -hmm. Did you plan any housing? Actually, right now the population there. I mean, this pretty dense. Yes, yeah. pretty dense. Those this are all whole, they're all apartments. So. Oh, great! So and that the, all those people can use. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the yeah. you know park yes. is like ten but acres. That's the only park that they you have. It would be good information just to supplement. It would be to have like a, within a certain distance how many people. Would you know be using the transit? Right. Just to yeah. get those oh. numbers. I think as a part of your presentation, it'd be a really strong uh, item to su further support it. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I think you could add uh, some enhancements to some of the existing streets as sort of another layer to it. And it looks like you're kind of planning that with the real extension. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. so, sorry, I really appreciate you giving us the demographics and all of the data ahead of time. Because it really helps us see and, and justify the identification that you come up with. Um, you can see how many people are affected 
in the Unitarian faith that is true. So that anybody who's been on the final faith knows that, you know, there's these huge ancient side elements that are used just for maintenance and what a huge waste of opportunity. And and the creek's not attractive, but I mean that's unfortunately by design, so you have rectified that. But I do appreciate you giving us you know how dense this area is, how diverse this area is, and uh, and it does justify, you know, and and how park pulls. I mean the Richie Valens Park is about the biggest park anywhere near it. So this is and you should have said that, but uh, you just say it in your book. <laughs> how big is Richie Richie Valens Park? How big is it? Yeah. So like a community like a, park or no, it's fifteen. It's about 20 acres. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what thing, that's going, that's going back to this issue of, of housing, maybe I kind of went in a different direction with it. I think part of it is, in order for that large public area that you've created in that tremendous public suite that's there, I think housing would be kind of an essential component of that area. Only because otherwise there's no ownership in the evenings there. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it could be a pretty... You, have you know, there, kind right? of left over. Even with those, I don't know that they would create that proximity. Yeah. And, and I think it's possible. And actually, I recall I, a long time ago, I worked on the LA framework plan. And one of the conclusions that the housing consultant reached was that any time any site is developed anywhere in Los Angeles, in order for it to even come close to meeting the housing needs, it had to have housing. That any kind of single purpose use of a site was criminal. Uh, and that the uh, Therefore, especially on corridors where essentially we have primarily just commercial development, mm -hmm. that it was crucial that those corridors be populated mm -hmm. and that you know it's different it's densities it's of housing be created. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think in this case, there's, there's kind of an aesthetic and a qualitative a quality of life benefit to the area that if you did have above like above those retail areas, it's it's really an alternate lifestyle to those right. that have apartment living. These could have more urban living, right? Yeah, like like those exactly. And I think. I think that would add a lot to it because then I think at night you would have people still mingling and, and uh, moving around at all times. It would be much safer too. Yeah, I actually talked a little bit about it kind of like creating this housing right on top of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that, that's a strategy. I agree. You, I just kind of build on that. I see in your press that you have Del Mar Station, and I'm just wondering, I mean, that's kind of starting to address what's, what, what the comment here is about kind of. Changing the uh, mix, having mixed use built in. I'm just wondering, did you visit Del Mar yes, Station? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's pretty active at night given mm -hmm. the restaurants and things. Well, the Pasadena, the, the station that's in right. Pasadena, mm -hmm. it's all housing. Great. Right. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Steve? I think it's only missing one thing, and that would be I think you should build a model of this. <laughs> I actually was thinking about it, but I had a little time. Oh, man, I would love to see that. One inch equals 10 feet scale. Yeah. Oh, you could God. sell that. Out. Hey, we had a model one that went all the way to that <laughs> door. <laughs> Literally. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I think you should put that into mirror first. Done. I have one comment. I just, I, I haven't seen it in a process. I'm sitting back here. I just wonder where the uh, transit stations are. Um, this transit station? Yeah, on the oh, on the plan. Yes. Um, this area right here reaches, you can see on the section, is right on top of the mall. Okay. So that's, that's the only one there? Well, on this study area, but along Panama City, I mean, I there's three different stations. The north, on or off. Mm -hmm. I mean, on, this on is my... Big, on the big one, does it show up? Yes, sir? No, on this one. No, because no, this is my study area. It's that area. So she's along a transit corridor that has three proposed stations, and this is her development area. And then the other thing is, if you put sort of a bubble of how, how far it is from that creek, how long would it take you to walk from that creek? It's, I mean, all together, it's about three miles. So this is the, I didn't mention, is the halfway point, so it's about a mile. So I mean, it depends on how fast you walk. Yeah. So I mean, it's pretty. It's connected to the neighborhoods. Right. Okay. Everybody, come and take a look. Thank you, Zara.